All right, it's the notes for the lesson combining transformations. So as it says here, in general, stretches, reflections, and translations on some function f of x can be readily inspected if it is written in this form. And I want to highlight that part, if it is written in this form. Don't assume an equation is always going to be written in this form. But if it is, the a value, that represents your vertical stretch. And we say by a scale factor of a as well. Uh, I can say a bit more detail. Um, if A is negative, then this is also a vertical reflection. All right, B value, uh, which is inside the function. That represents a horizontal stretch. By a scale factor of not b, it's the reciprocal of b, of 1 over b. But like before, if b is negative, it's also a horizontal reflection. Right, uh, your h value, it's being added to just the x inside the function again. That's a horizontal translation. And the simplest way of saying this is to say by minus h units. So as we've seen before, if h is positive, it moves to the left. If h is negative, it moves to the right. And probably the simplest parameters, this k value, that's the vertical translation. And just by whatever that k value is, if it's positive, it goes up. If it's negative, it goes down. All right, so as it says here underlined as well, if you have multiple transformations, you want to perform the reflections and stretches first before you perform any translations. So. Let's try applying it to here. So we see here in red is a graph of f of x, or root x. I'll write both down. The actual equation, which is root x, and in function notation, I'm saying f of x. And I want to sketch 3 times f of x minus 2 minus 3. So looking at this, I see three different transformations. Um, I see an a value of 3, which means I know this function is going to be stretched vertically by a scale factor of 3. I'm going to take that into account right now. And I'll draw that in red. And so I'm going to look at these points here. I'm picking these points because they're kind of friendly, easy points to kind of see the coordinates of. And I want to triple all the y coordinates. And so for this first point, to highlight in yellow, it doesn't change because the y coordinate is 0, 0 times 3 is still 0 but all the rest will change. So for this next point, the y-coordinate was at 1, now it's at 3, 3 times more. This point right here, the y-coordinate was at 2, now it's going to be at 6. And that's the last one I can draw with some degree of accuracy. Um, again, this point right here, um, which is at 3, the y-coordinate's at 9, and so I can't really draw that very accurately, so I'll just stick with these ones. Okay, so just that is my vertical stretch. Next. I'll do these two together. That minus 2 and minus 3. The minus 2 is 2 to the right, and minus 3 is 3 down. And generally, I recommend doing these together. So I have already performed the vertical stretch, so I'm going to take those points I've highlighted in yellow and move them all 2 to the right and 3 down. Starting with this point here, move it 2 to the right and 3 down. I now know my function is going to start right here. And do the same thing for the other points I've highlighted. So take this point here, 2 to the right, 3 down. I can see it's an x-intercept of 3 now. 2 to the right and 3 down. Uh, that's 6. So I think right here. One, two. Right. 
And so I'll make that a bit neater. And that's a graph of my function. And so now I want to label this in two different ways. First, I'll label it in function notation. 3 times f of x take away 2 minus 3. As well, I'll write the actual equation. The actual equation is going to be 3 times the square root of x minus 2 take away 3. And again, uh, what I just wrote down is the actual equation. y equals 3 times root x minus 2 take away 3. And above that is the equation in function notation. Always be clear about the difference between those. All right, let's look at this one here. Same idea. Uh, again, starting with the same base function, root x, or f of x. This time, though, I want to do a little bit of algebraic work before I look at all the transformations. And that's because it's not yet in the form I want. I have f of 2x minus 2 take away 3. But if we compare this back to what I have right here, notice the b value, if I want to see all my transformations properly, should be factored out from the x. And so if I look here, that's not, it's not in that form. So I'm going to first, I'll just copy it down here. So again, f of x, sorry, not f of x, the transform version was y equals f at 2x minus 2, all take away 3. And so I want to factor out the 2 from 2x minus 2. There's nothing wrong with what I have before, but it's not convenient for me to see all the transformations properly. And I just made a mistake there. It should be a 1 when I take out the 2. So now these two equations are equivalent, but the second equation is more convenient to me. I can see all my transformations. I can see this 2 represents a vertical stretch, vertical expansion. I'll say expansion this time, but what really matters is a scale factor by a scale factor of 2. And so I'll sketch that right away. Same thing I did before. So it's going to be here and here and here. OK, so that's just the vertical stretch. And then, oh, shoot. <laughs> it's a horizontal stretch. That's OK. Everyone makes mistakes. Not just like before. That is a horizontal stretch. By a scale factor of 1 over 2. Un inadvertently, I made a very common mistake. Uh, and so that means all my x coordinates are being divided by 2 or being multiplied by a half. And so let me look at my same points I had before here. And I want to take these same points, and I can pick other points, but I don't, I'm, these are the ones that have the ease, simplest coordinates. And I want to take all the x coordinates and cut them in half, divide them by 2. So again, my first point won't change because the x coordinate is 0. Next point will be right here. Next point will be right here. Next point will be right here. I've taken all the x coordinates of those points I drew and divided them by 2. And so what I have here is just the horizontal compression. OK, all my x coordinates were cut in half. Now I can do the easiest part last, which is the minus 1 and the minus 3. So it's 1 to the right and 3 down. And so I'll take these points I've highlighted and move them all 1 to the right and 3 down. Generally. Translations are the simplest part, just sliding it around. So here's my final graph. And again, the equation of it, I'll write as y equals first in function notation. f of, I'll go back to the first one I have, 2x minus 2, take away 3. I don't have, again, factoring out the 2 like I did before was just to see the transformations. It's not inherently wrong. The equation that's not in function notation would be root 2x minus 2, all that inside the square root, and the take away 3 separate, because it's not inside the function. All right, next one. Same idea. I have a little bit of algebraic work that I want to do first before I focus on the same graph of root x. And so let me start by, again, writing down the equation as it was given. Uh, 
helps if I write it down properly. Now in the form it's in, it's still not actually that convenient to me. I have 2 minus x, and if I look back at how we started this, back up here, way up. Um, if I look right here, I want my, I want to be x plus or minus something, not something plus or minus x. And so I've got to change the order if I want to see the transformations as conveniently as I have it right there. And so what I want to do here with this 2 minus x is first I want to just change the order of that, exp that part. And so instead of 2 minus x, that's equivalent to minus x plus 2. But again, that minus in front of the x, that x is a coefficient of negative 1. x is being multiplied by negative 1. And I need to factor that out again. So everything you see highlighted in yellow is equivalent. And the last thing I've written down is the most con convenient in terms of seeing all the transformations. Again, nothing I have up there is wrong. It's just not convenient for seeing all the transformations. Now it's in that form I wanted. So now I can see. There is a vertical stretch, or a vertical expansion. By a scale factor of 3, and a vertical reflection, because it's negative. I will do that first. Uh, the minus 1 right here, or just the minus, that represents a horizontal reflection. And then lastly, 2 to the right and 4 up. And I got a lot of transformations going on here. It doesn't matter the order I do it as long as I do the reflections and stretches first. I can do those in any order, but the translations I should do last. So I'll be boring and kind of go just from left to right. So first, I'll vertically expand this by a scale factor of 3. Uh, and I've kind of done that before. Okay, so that's just a vertical expansion by a scale factor of 3. I'll now reflect it, which is relatively easy to do. Just take these points and reflect it vertically. So it still goes through 0, 0, but it's now going down here. Okay, so now that part there, I want to horizontally reflect. And so I'll draw this in blue. So again, still so far going through 0, 0, but now it's reflecting this way. And that should be the hardest part done, because at this point, all I've got to do is take what I've highlighted in blue and move it 2 to the right and 4 up. Take all these points. So 2 to the right and 4 up should start up here. It should go through these points like this. There's my graph in green. And again, the equation in function notation is already given. The equation in terms of just x and y would be negative 3 times the square root. And I can go back to 2 minus x, or any of those other forms that I've highlighted in yellow down there, um, plus 4 is separate. So again, that's the actual equation in terms of x and y. Um, what I gave you was the equation in function notation. And again, that equation I gave you, uh, that f there stands for root x. So it's kind of combining a few things together. So the final problem now. Uh, basically, I want to find the equation of what you see in red and blue. And so I will start with, it doesn't really matter. I'll start with the graph in blue first. Um, if I compare, if I go from green to blue, I can see the graph in green, um, if I just count from here to here, is 12 units wide, whereas the graph in blue is only 3 units wide. 3 is a quarter of 12. So I know this graph in blue has been horizontally compressed by a scale factor of a quarter. So I'm going to write that down first. So focus on the graph in blue. So I have a horizontal compression by a scale factor of 1 quarter. Vertically, I can see it's compressed. I can see this is, from here to here, is one and a half units. 
from here to here is six units. One and a half, 1 1.5 is again a quarter of six. So I can see it's also been vertically compressed by a scale factor of a quarter. Vertical compression by a scale factor of one quarter. I know that's not it though, because if that was it, let's see what this would look like. If that was it, if it was just those two, com two compressions, uh, it doesn't matter what order I do in them first. So if it was just that, uh, if I just compress this, let's say vertically first, instead of that highest point being at 6, the highest point would be at 1.5. These points would be unchanged just from the vertical compression because the y coordinate is 0. 0 divided by 4 is still 0. So just that f one transformation would look like this. Okay. I also have the horizontal compression in which I do the same idea to my x coordinates. I take all my x coordinates and I divide them by 4. So. This point right here is at 6. 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. So it's going to here now. This point here is at negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 4 is negative 1.5. That's here. So now I have this. If I erase what I have before, I'm getting pretty close. But clearly it's not enough. So it's not just these two um, compressions. I also now can see that I also have to translate it 1.5 units to the left. So how do I put this all into an equation? Well, in function notation, I can say what I have in blue is the same as function f of x. So I'll start with function notation. Uh, but 1 quarter in the front, because there's a vertical compression by a scale factor of a quarter, times f of the horizontal compression by a scale factor of a quarter. That means I should have a 4 right here, because it's always a reciprocal. Whereas, again, the vertical compression is the exact same number. But I also need to move it 1.5 units to the left, so I have to put bracket x plus 1.5. And so that is the equation of that blue part of the spiral. In function notation, what's the actual equation? Well, I need to look back up here and remind myself, what is f of x? So I'll write it right here as well. Don't forget, f of x, I tell you that top half of the circle is root 36 minus x squared. And so that f I see right there stands for this. So basically, I want to put these two things together. And so it's going to get a little messy. That's OK. I never said it had to be neat. It's still going to be 1 quarter in the front, because it's 1 quarter times whatever is about to come next. Instead of f, I have my function here. So my function is the square root of 36 minus x. But x is the input. That x is the input of the function. But right now, that x is all of this. Everything I've just highlighted in pink is inside my function. So instead of x squared, it's 4 times x plus 1.5, all squared. Like I said, it's going to be kind of messy, more than kind of messy. So 4 times x plus 1.5. And all of this has to be squared. And that is the equation that I actually have typed into Desmos to create the graph you see. So again, a tough problem. Um, again, many things to think about. Again, keep in mind this right here is the equation in function notation. You type that into Desmos, nothing's going to happen because it relies on knowing what function f is. This right here is the actual equation, but it's probably a bit harder. And all that relies on these transformations here. And as for the last part, I'll let you do that on your own. Same idea as this. I'm going to stop there.